you to tell me something. Why is it that every time you come to this hospital, sooner or later you end up crying? I guess I just find it very difficult to believe that things really are going to work out all right. Oh, I don't know. Nice day. 
got up feeling good this morning. And let me tell you, Dorian, how it warms the cockles of my heart to see a man with real integrity these days. We call that integrity. Young guy, 21, 22, got maybe 16 bucks in the bank, and yet he had enough guts to tell you he was his own man. And that just may cost him his job. I think he knows that. That's why I say he's got guts. He's a fool. Damn good reporter, though, huh? Now, throughout the annals of history, hey, did I ever tell you I'm quite a historian in my own right? school and stuff. Throughout history, you find that all your really first-rate tyrants always got rid of the best brains around them. They didn't worry about the second raiders. They knew they offered no threat to their authority. Take Hitler, for example. Who do you have around him? Goebbels, Goring, Ribbentrop, all mediocrity. Please, spare me, Marco. Okay, then I'll get right to the point. You should cultivate people like Richard Abbott, not drive them away. You started out okay. Appealed to his vanity a little bit, sidled up to him, then you blew it. You'll be quiet about Joe Riley. And yes. that's the most important thing. Sure. But on his terms. What he should have done was play it very straight, very honest. Tell him that Joe is under treatment right now, and pretty soon we'll find out just exactly what is wrong with him. Until then, we have made the decision to spare Vicky. Not to let her know, spare the anxiety, which is all the truth, right? Yes, of course. So why make up a big story? And you should have known better about the kid. He's more loyal to Joe than that. All you had to do was say to him, for Joe's sake, let's keep this thing quiet. He would have shut up until hell froze over. I suppose you're right. You know I'm right, Dorian. Trouble is, you've lost all perspective as far as Joe Riley's concerned. Have I now? Yeah, this thing you've got for him, this uh, fixation, this blind infatuation, whatever. Oh, I know you think it's love, but... I don't need your instant analysis, Marco. As a matter of fact, I think I've had quite enough of you for one day. So would you get the car... I feel like going down. Let's track down Richard Abbott, will you? I want to see him. Nope. Quiet, fine. Send her in. Pat? Joe, I'm sorry to bother you with all of this, but Briggs and I are in complete disagreement about the Sunday layout. Look. You are. That's a fine. This the one you like? You look terrible. Thank you, Pat. I wish I could say the same thing about you, but that wouldn't be true. Want me to call Briggs, have him come up here? We'll argue this, huh? No. No, I'm going to call Vicky right now and tell her to get back here. <laughs> why would you want to do a thing like that? Because you look awful, that's why. You look like you haven't had a decent night's sleep or a good meal since she left. Now, I told her that I would watch over you. Apparently, I've been neglecting my duties. Pat, how would you like it if I came bursting into your office and said, Pat, you look terrible? Well, I would probably burst into tears and tell you. Well, then, let's play. An old nautical term for, uh, let's drop the subject, huh? Now, I, uh, where were we? Well, um, I was just going to call Vicky. I know before that. You won't let me do it. No, I won't let you do it. Joe, I really think I should. Oh, Pat, I'm sorry. Oh, come in. Yeah. I'm already in. Oh, I'm sorry. Ben, out of my... Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. No, you're here. Stick around. Hi. I don't think we're going to need Briggs to settle this. This one I like. Right. One time. That's the one Briggs on. Well, you win some and you lose some, don't you, Pat? Yeah, 
I know I have it. I ordered it, Turkey. Child abuse, this child was abused just as much as it's been taken out and beaten. Well, I don't know what we're supposed to do. We'll get to pass the law and have 
how the kids all line up and force them to take the shots? No, that's exactly how they do it in the totalitarian country. Well, I'll tell you how I'd like to do it. I'd like, like to line their parents up and give them all a swift kick in the head. Let's just hope this isn't paralytic. Peter, thanks for talking. Sure. Oh, well, uh, Larry. Yeah, listen, um, you pick my brain. I'd like to pick yours. I've got a diagnostic problem. Yes, yeah, sure. Well, let's see. Uh, my patient started out with uh, blurred vision, dizzy spells, headaches, and progressed to something very similar to an epileptic seizure. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, he's convulsed, lost consciousness briefly. How many episodes has it been? Three or four over a period of maybe three months. Mm -hmm. Now, the patient's undergone extensive diagnostic testing. And, uh, well, it's been narrowed considerably. You ruled out meningitis, bacterial, viral. Yeah. Epilepsy. Final tap was negative. That scan's inconclusive. Where was that performed? Hmm? Oh, in New York. By a good man. If he had re-administered in about oh, a week or so, you may know more than but on the basis of what I've told you, what would you say? Well, Peter, it sounds like a neurological problem. Infarction, brain tumor. There's something unusual in a pediatric case. Yeah, well. Oh, listen, I almost forgot. On one occasion, one seizure, the patient did a lot of damage. Damage? Yeah. Tore up a room. Ripped it. This is his mother's dress, you know, which tried to restrain him. Just happened once. Once out of three or four seizures. Well, what happened to you? I don't know. What happened the other time? Well, convulsions, loss of consciousness, no violence. Obviously, you have. 